Michigan Magazine is kept on the road by our many Michigan friends. Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare, a winning combination. Cops and Donuts. Something special's cooking hot and delicious. Indulge yourself at Morning at Maggie's in Bay City. Omelets, frittatas, hotcakes, and more. Make every day special with a stop at Morning at Maggie's for breakfast or lunch on Saginaw in Bay City. Hingeman Acres, canoe livery and resort on M33 just north of Mayo. Catering to the outdoor enthusiasts. Cabins, canoes, kayaks, rafts, and more. Daytime or overnight trips along the world-famous Asabo River. A family getaway for over 75 years. Hi, and welcome to another edition of Michigan Magazine. It's August, and we're heading out to discover one of Michigan's more popular agricultural products, grapes and the wine that comes from them. We're first heading into the Southwest Michigan Wine Territory for a tour of some of the most popular wineries, then into the growing northern Michigan wine industry to a small and growing northeastern lower Michigan winery, Rose Valley. Stay tuned. It's all coming up on Michigan Magazine. Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare, what began as a crazy idea among nine police officers to purchase the historic Clare City Bakery quickly became an international phenomenon, carrying out a Michigan tradition with delicious donuts, pies, pastries, breads, original coffee, and more, plus a full menu at the new adjacent Traffic Stop Diner. Downtown Clare, a winning combination, Cops and Donuts. Introducing the Weed Gator. For safe and easy aquatic weed removal, the Weed Gator is the number one alternative to harsh chemicals for getting rid of pond and lake weeds. Safe and effective, see it in action now at WeedGator.net. Made in the USA. This week at Michigan Magazine, we're back on the Southwest Michigan Wine Trail, courtesy of our latest Michigan Magazine and the Southwest Michigan Wine Trail Association. On previous editions, we've ventured to vineyards, wineries, and tasting rooms in this region, proving once and for all that Michigan is at the top of many wine connoisseurs' lists for great tasting wines. Today, we wrap up our four-part series with trips to Domain Berry and Cellars, Lemon Creek Winery, and Fruit Farm, and Tabor Hill. Barry, this is Kathy Fielding from Tabor Hill. Barry, Kathy, nice to meet you. Pleasure. Now, this is something that is very overwhelming for me because I'm not familiar with the southwest part of the state ah. as far as even the wine country here, but we've got the wine trails going on, which is a Absolutely. New, new thing. And this is Tabor Hill out in the middle of God's country. Exactly. What is here at Tabor Hill? There's <laughs> a lot of new and exciting wines that we've mm -hmm. produced here. Um, we have a variety of about 23, 24 products oh, that we make okay. here, um, produced out of our own grapes that we grow in our vineyard. Let's, let's take a look at some of these over here. Can you kind of introduce us to a few of the, sure. the favorites here? Our number one seller is our classic Dummy Sec, which we have been producing since the winery became bonded in 1970. Oh. That is actually a wine that we refer to as our White House wine. Okay. It's been served in the White House since 74. What food is temp what is type of the wine is it demi sec? I'm mean, just it's, very much It's nice. considered a semi-dry, which is a nice term for slightly sweet. Uh, okay. We always say semi-dry. We rarely use the word sweet in describing wines, uh -huh. and I'm not sure why that is. It's also the wine that we refer to as Bob Hope's favorite. Oh. Uh -huh. He and his wife used to purchase our demi sec from us for years and years, which we did receive a Christmas card from them just about every year that they were buying wine from us. So Isn't that, that was a really nice treat. Well, Super people. Yes. yes. So yes. that is our number one seller. That'd be more or less your signature. Exactly. Yeah, we do have a large variety of dries as well as the mm -hmm. semi-dries and mm -hmm. something to please just about every palate out there. Tabor Hill has been around for quite a, quite a while. I mean, this is something that is kind of a tradition, tradition in this area, isn't it? Yes, we planted our first grapes in 68 and as I said earlier, we became a bonded winery in 1970. Wow, that's amazing. And besides the wine, you've also got a, a fine dining area, which is... Absolutely, which we just perfect. doubled our capacity in the last eight months. Mm -hmm. Looking over the vineyards? Absolutely. The yeah. unfortunate part was we spent more time on the phone saying no to our guests than yes, so we decided <laughs> we needed to make some changes. Okay, all right. So at that point, we started renovating and added on everything from this point on. This oh, used boy. to be from here out to the end was our outside deck, and we now have a nice. full service restaurant bar. Look at this. A brand new outside deck, which people can come in and just sit with a bottle of wine and enjoy the Ooh. peace and quiet that this part of the country has to offer. And on this September day, it is beautiful, gorgeous. It is absolutely gorgeous. It happens like gorgeous. this every day here, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> it does. 
Oh my goodness, this is the expansion. And this is our new dining room. So obviously we're now in the position to accommodate a lot more guests and that makes it much more pleasant for us. And people are, have finally accepted the fact that they don't have to be a wine connoisseur, they just have to find what they like and enjoy it. It's just that simple. And what's really nice is how many times can you go out to a business and try their product before you buy it and make sure that it's something that you're going to like and enjoy. And with all of us working together down here in the southwest corner of the state, it's been great for all of us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People that visit other wineries are told about Tabor Hill. People that visit here are suggested that they move around the corner and start moving down the wine trail, and it's, it's been a great asset for all the wineries involved. Yes, yes, and that is the unique part of this whole story, I think, is the wine trail. And you can come into one location and get a map and show you where these locations are. And Absolutely. Bring, uh, bring, bring everybody that you really want to enjoy this part of the state, which is really beautiful. It's a whole new concept, I think, to any industry when you start pairing up with your competition and, mm -hmm. and everybody helps each other. Right. Isn't that neat? It's no, it you, is. You know, you're competing for the best tasting wine, but you're not competing with each other. You're sharing information. That's right. You're sharing each other's uh, knowledge of what we're Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Kathy, it's been a pleasure. Thank it's you very much for sharing. It's been great. Thank you so us. much. Well, from Tabor Hill, it was on to our next stop with the help of our guide, Tony Peterson of Contessa Wine Cellars. The next location was a small family-owned operation called Domain Berry and Cellars. Wally, this is uh, Barry from Michigan Magazine. How do you Barry, do, good Wally? To meet you. We've got a great place here. Tell us a little bit about your winery. Well, uh, we're a small family farm. We've been growing grapes and, and making wine for about 30 years, but more wow. for family and friends, but just opened it to the retail end of the business Wonderful. last year. And you're getting a lot of response probably from the new wine trails that they're there. Oh, the wine trail's yeah. fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a great opportunity for people to, to, get a, to get out and get out with their friends and do kind of a, a fun recreational wine yeah. tasting and hit all the places. And, and discover wines like nobody's ever discovered them before. I mean, this is an opportunity for the novice, or perhaps, to get into the, the world of wines and find out what it's all about. But this part of the state, we're finding more and more that it's just uh, a perfect place for growing South, the grapes. Southwest Michigan is yep. probably one of the better growing okay. regions in the Midwest. Right. Uh, what is What would you say is your signature wine now? I mean, have you got... Uh, well, we're primarily on the drier on the side. Drier side? Okay. Uh, we're growing the Rhone varietals, Rosan, Marsan, okay. Vionnet, Pinot mm -hmm. Noir, and then we have right now all five Bordeaux reds in the ground getting ready to take our first Bordeaux blend. What is it w with winemaking for you? I mean, what is the passion for you? Why, why did you ever get into it in your family? Well, I, I like to drink wine. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it was kind of fun to make it, and yeah. we were doing a lot of kit wines back in the old days, oh, and yeah. prior to our grapes coming into maturity. and. It's just a lot of fun to, to take a raw product and turn it into something that not only you enjoy, but uh, people love. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people out there that really enjoy the, the flavors that certain wineries and wines bring, bring, bring for them. And they are unique. Can we take a look inside? Yes, please. Okay, come on. From new wineries to the old established wineries and farms that have been around for generations, the Southwest Michigan Wine Trail encompasses it all. Our next and final stop is just on the road at Lemon Creek Winery and Fruit Farm, owned and operated by the same family for nearly 150 years. This farm here has been here since 1855. Wow. Uh, my family came over in the late 1700s and started living in this area and we have been farming here for a very long time. Pretty much fruit has been the crop here? A lot of fruit, yes. Uh, we, we've gone, we switched to, we started doing a lot of wine grapes about 30 years ago wow. and have since uh, progressed to have about 130 acres of wine grapes that we produce My that goodness. are in production now. Oh, and you produce quite a bit of wine then too. Yeah, we produce about four, three to, three to 4,000 cases a year. Oh my goodness. Tyson, what would be your most popular a vintage? Or um, we have been, kind of made a little name for ourselves with our uh, our reds, um, mm -hmm. our Cabernet Sauvignon is year in and year out the only Michigan grown and produced Cabernet. Mm -hmm. uh, we have 15 acres of Cabernet Sauvignon in production. Wow. So we annually produce about three to 400 cases of wine, three to 400 cases of that a year. We also produce um, some, some of our, our, new, our newer wines. We make a late harvest that is our Silver Beach Sauterne and we have did that this year and that's been also very popular. Um, a new thing we did this year as well was we did an ice wine. 
Nice one. And we have been picking it for about 12 years on and off because you can't do it every year. Been picking it on and off for, pe for other people and selling the grapes. We decided to do one ourselves this last year and it's the stuff's amazing if you've never had it. Well, what is that all about? I mean, the grapes are actually picked and processed while they're frozen. Well, they're frozen? Yes. Oh, my. So instead of um, like 160 gallons of juice per, for a ton of grapes, you get like 60 to 80 gallons. Mm. And the, the sugar's all very concentrated in it, and you end up with just a super, super sweet wine. Mm. Sounds interesting. But it's all natural. I see you've got a few awards here, and you've been uh, you've got some. Yes, we We've done okay. Yes. We found that to be an understatement indeed. Southwest Michigan was definitely an award-winning region. So, there you go. This has been quite a journey for Michigan Magazine. To explore the wineries and tasting rooms of Southwest Michigan is a wonderful experience, not only for the true connoisseur, but for the novice. And with the work being done to map and produce a specific wine trail for this region is something that will be appreciated for those seeking a one-of-a-kind destination and experience. We thank the wine trail organizers for their wonderful hospitality and dedication to bringing about the best in Michigan's great Southwest wine region. And a special thank you to Tony Peterson, our guide from Contessa Wine Cellars. For more information on the Southwest Michigan Wine Trail, visit them online on the web at www www.miwinetrail.com Michigan Magazine is being brought to you in part by Your Northern Experiences Never Complete Without a Stop at the historic Mod Eaters of Luzerne. Enjoy the ambiance inside or outside on the huge patio area. Order from the complete menu with entrees served hot, fresh, and good. Come experience Mod Eaters in the heart of God's country, Luzerne, Michigan. Clemex Sales and Service on Mapes Road, west of Mile, your complete recreational vehicle sales and service connection. Visit their beautiful showroom of new and pre-owned ATVs, lawnmowers, power equipment, snowmobiles, utility vehicles, and more. Clemex Sales and Service is also the home of the American-made Victory Motorcycle line on display at Clemex on Mapes Road, Mile. Autumn in Michigan is truly a wonderful, colorful time, with the forests, meadows, and fields coming alive for one final hoopla from Mother Nature. With collages of color as a backdrop, wildlife and humankind prepare for the colder weather inevitable here in Michigan. Farmers are busy in the fields with harvest and one last plow. Pumpkins take center stage for many, but for some, like Adam Kolajewski, the precious grape is in the spotlight. Adam is owner and vintner of Rose Valley Winery, one of two wineries located in the small northeast Michigan community of Rose City. Is northeast Michigan really in the wine business, you might ask? You bet, and doing quite well with award-winning wines lovingly created by local hands and purchased at sellout speed. Who would have thought? Well, it took the foresight and belief by entrepreneurs and wine lovers like Adam to take the educated leap of faith into the world of commercial winemaking in a region never thought by some to be conducive to respectable winemaking. Wineries are popping up throughout northeastern Michigan at an amazing pace. For Adam, winemaking on a commercial basis seemed to be inevitable. Well, I've been in the wine business now commercially and legally for six years. Uh, prior to that, I was a home winemaker. As a hobby, you have to be careful because hobbies sometimes can get carried away and you end up uh, working seven days a week in, in a legitimate winery. I came to Rose City because the land was available, the community was welcoming. It just seemed like a nice place to come, so we, and I owned the land anyway, so we put, uh, put the building up and started uh, in business. We got good mineral rich soil. Soil in this area is deposited by the last glacial period and there was a lot of minerals ground up and mi mixed with the soil and so it makes good mineral rich soil. We don't have climate to have champion us because it does have uh, late spring frost and early fall frost but that just means that we have to be more selective in the variety of grapes that we grow and we're growing cold hardy uh, hybrids that were mostly developed by a gentleman in uh, upstate Wisconsin for the Wisconsin-Minnesota winters. And their winters are a little more hardy than ours, so if the grapes will grow there, they'll grow, grow here. And, uh, and they are growing very well. The nice thing about the hybrid grapes, cold hardy hybrid grapes, is they bud out late in the spring, 
so you avoid this late, late spring frost. And the grapes are usually harvesting about the uh, Labor Day weekend or the first couple of weeks in September. Mm -hmm. So your grapes are harvested and the sugar content is up before the frost, the early frost in the fall. Mm -hmm. So that, that makes it uh, good for our area. Quality grapes? Quality grapes, yes. yes. And it makes for even better wine, right? Yes, it does. Okay. 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 Once we get our, our bricks, which is a the term for the sugar content in grapes, up to 22%, 21 or 22%, it's time to harvest. It's a family owned and operated company that has on staff an extended family of employees. Each wine, whether it be created from grapes or numerous other Michigan fruits, is meticulously processed from growing, picking, and fermentation to bottling to guarantee a true taste of northern Michigan. It's an ozone generator that uh, imparts ozone into the water. So when we're doing our sanitizing for washing tanks or cleaning bottles or rinsing bottles, we use ozonated water. Uh, the, the ozone comes up through the line and we pump it right through our bottling system. It uh, flushes each bottle with a, a spray and uh, disinfects the bottles. It's a good st uh, sterilizing agent. We use ozonation for washing tanks and everything else in the winery, so we keep things nice, nice and clean and sterilized. And then we, uh, from the bottle process, from the clean bottles, we go over to the bottler. We have a six uh, bottle set up. It's gravity fed from the tank, and uh, each bottle is calibrated to 750 mils, so we know that's accurate. So when you're buying your wine, you're getting the right amount of wine. And uh, from the bottler, we take it over to the corking machine. And uh, at the corker, we just apply the corker through a pneumatic corking and one, time, one at a time pretty much and uh, take it over and get it set up and then we slide on a mylar cap, a black cap, heat shrink that and then we put that into a box and at a later time we'll pull it back and put a label on it. So. Okay, what are we bottling today? Today we're bottling Brianna, which uh, it's a grape that we got up in Johannesburg, Michigan, which is north of here a little bit. Uh, first time we've ever fermented it and processed it, but it came out great. It's got a little spice to it. It's kind of semi-sweet and uh, very enjoyable to drink. For more information on the winery and upcoming community events, visit their website at www.rosevalleywinery.net. And for more information on the growing wine industry in Michigan, along with maps and info on the various wineries and vineyards, go to www.michiganwines.com. Vacation. Don't make the planning of it more than what you're trying to get away from. At NorthernMichiganCabinRentals.com, you can choose from over 2,500 cabins, cottages, lodges, resorts, lakefront vacation home rentals, and more. Whatever experience you're looking for, from rustic to luxury and everything in between. No more rustling with telephone books. No more endless internet searches. Just one site with over 2,500 Northern Michigan destinations. NorthernMichiganCabinRentals.com. Lazurn Express Campground is the premier campground with everything to make your northern adventure complete. Modern and rustic campsites, equestrian campers welcome, a huge market with bakery and deli. Nearby RV, hiking and horse trails along with a complete canoe, raft and kayak rental. Visit us online, then call for more information and reserve your spot today. The Michigan-made rebounding mailbox pole. Never again worry about the winter snowplow taking out your mailbox with this ingenious rebounding pole. Your mailbox takes a hit and keeps coming back year after year. Call now or visit their website toughmailboxes.com What a great time we've been having exploring Michigan back roads this summer. We've got many new adventures to share with you, so stay tuned. Also today, we welcome aboard a new supporter to our team. Sweet Misty Sweets of Luzerne, Michigan. Delicious treats from donuts, humongous cookies and specialty cakes like graduation and wedding, to wonderful coffee, banana splits and more. No wonder she's getting a reputation here in the midst of the Huron National Forest in this crossroads village known as Luzerne, a kind of oasis in the midst of God's country. Welcome aboard, Misty. Once again, thank you all for joining us and making our program possible each week right here on RFD TV. And don't forget to join us live behind the scenes via Periscope, a brand new app from Twitter. Check it out at your app store, then track us down and subscribe. You'll be amazed at the goings-ons. And of course, we're on so many of the other more popular social media outlets, including YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, MySpace, YouTube, stream, Pinterest, and a whole lot more. Catch us next week right here on RFD TV. Have a great week. We'd like to thank all those that help keep Michigan Magazine on the road. 
Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare. A winning combination. Cops and Donuts. Hale Hardware, your do-it center in Hale, Michigan. Much more than a regular hardware store, providing everything you need for whatever your project is, along with a knowledgeable sales staff to get her done. Serving Northern Michigan since 1946. Hale Hardware, south of M65 at Ainsley in Hale. Experience the beauty, artistry, and taste of Northern Michigan. Come to Amish Country Natural Products on Mount Tom Road, north of Mile, just off M33. From arts and crafts to fresh foods and vegetables, all natural, all local, all good. Stop by and get acquainted with Amish Country Natural Products. 1454 North Mount Tom Road, Mile. Rose City Drug, just south of the Rose City city limits at 2640 North M33. Featuring a state-of-the-art, completely automated, and extremely accurate computer-filled prescription process. Here at Rose City Drug, we're a family-owned and operated for over 20 years. We offer fast and friendly service. And we always take the extra step to make sure your needs are fulfilled.